All right. Who loves the 80s? Raise your hand if you love the 80s. Only a few? Come on, come on. Like, raise your hand if you have the, the 80s. Okay. The reason I love the 80s is because that's the first time I got my hands on a computer. It was a Radio Shack TRS-80 quarter computer. And the reason I bring this up is because there was a bunch of programs. One of them was Eliza, which was maybe the first AI chatbot that ever existed. And as a kid, it was fantastic, right? You could talk to your computer and you would respond. The only thing is, it was only interested about you talking about your problems, but it was not trying to help you do anything about it, right? And so what I want to do is change the script. I want to go back in time, change the script, and bring back AI right onto your device where AI is used to solve user problems, not just to talk about user problems. And this is built-in AI. So I'm going to walk you through what we are working on in Chrome in our built-in AI. So let's jack in. So now you might be thinking, well, client-side AI already exists, right? So why do we need built-in AI in the first place? And sure, frameworks like MediaPipe let you run local model on your device, right? A whole LLM on your device. But there's a catch, right? It is a huge download. This is gigabyte of data. And the other thing is, it's very hard for you to understand if your user's device can actually run that sort of LLM, right? You don't have enough data about what user is capable of doing. So let's take a quick break. Um, I want to know how many websites do you visit in a week? Is it three, five, 10, more? It's probably like a lot, right? Because we are in the tech uh, industry. And now fast forward to max AI adoption, which I hope we do achieve at some point. What happened is that every single site is going to download their own LLM because we don't share the resource, right? So it's gigabytes of data for each of those websites. This is not good for your data plan as a user, and it's also going to occupy all your hard drive. But for developers, this is also um, a nightmare. So imagine the scenario. You are a developer, and your website just blew up on Reddit. Uh, I mean, Slashdot, maybe. That's a better fit. And everyone wants in on your awesome AI features, right? So what happens is each new user is going to download that LLM that you have on your like, server, right? And just like that, your server bill like, just exploded, right? So that's going to be very expensive for you. All right. So client-side AI, it can be done, but it's not always practical. And this is where built-in comes in. Imagine a shared LLM that's available, built-in into your browser, available for all websites and all extension, right? There is no more overload of like downloads, and also you don't have to worry about server cost. This is all taken care of. And if you need custom AI power, as you've seen in the morning, we are also committed to make improvement on that front. So don't worry about building AI replacing all of that, right? Uh, we are still going to invest in web GPU and all of that. OK, so model delivery is sorted, right? But client-side AI still has a few laser traps to avoid. Because building the ultimate client-side AI is kind of like trying to cram a whole Neo Geo arcade into a Game Boy, right? We are talking quality, speed, device reach, and we want it all. But with limited hardware, we got to find this like sweet spot where it's not like the super awesome thing, but it's like awesome enough to be valuable, right? So that you don't require all your users to upgrade their computer to a fancy gaming rig, right? That's not going to happen. OK, and the challenge with this massive AI model is that, yes, if it's a big model, the quality is going to be amazing, but it's going to use a lot of hardware, a lot of memory, and so on. That's not going to run on as many devices as necessary. All right. So if we go on the other end, right, what about tiny LLMs? Fast, you bet, right? It's going to be super fast. And that thing will run on anything, maybe even like a boombox or something. But the catch, the quality of that thing is really, really bad, right? It's kind of like the 10th generation mixtape, the one that was the 120 times. So more kind of like off-key mumbling, not a Bon Jovi scream, for instance. All right. So maybe Goldilocks was onto something, right? Middle ground can be sweet. Maybe that's the answer to the problem. Um, and sure, like a middle size NLM can be fast. It can run on a lot of devices. So we're good on that. But the quality is still not great, right? It's still meh. So it's not doing it either. 
All right. But, and so the problem we have is that we are trying to cram too many things into a one-size-fits-all model, right? We want to solve all the use cases that exist, and that's not going to happen. And so the approach that we need to take here is recognize that some of the use cases are more important than others, right? We need to be a bit picky about what we want to achieve. All right. So let's forget about this like jack of all synthesizer and let's just do like ketas, right? That's awesome enough. And by doing so, we can zero in on the use case that truly matters for a lot of users. And so if we do that, we can make our models life easier, just focusing on those use case to deliver the quality that we need them to do. All right, and with this focus approach, we can crank up the quality where it matters, right? And we don't have to compromise on performance or device reach. To be clear, this still is a hard problem, right? It's easy to paint like a pretty picture, but <laughs> it's still hard. Um, but we need to push those boundaries, right? We are going to keep at it, pushing those quality boundaries up. And we also got one more trick up our neon sleeves, which is we don't have to settle to a solo act, right? We can have a band of AI models. We can bring specialized LoRa, for instance. We can bring specialized expert models that are very good at some of the use case, but just those use case, right? And when we do that, um, just like if you are into the music, you can bring a trusty 808 like drum machine. It only drew drums. It's tiny, but it's awesome, right? So that's what we want to do. And essentially, this is built-in AI, right? This is client-side AI where things get a lot easier because a lot of things are being taken care of by the browser. So we are serving up a whole AI band, models, LoRa's, expert models, you name it. And it's all tuned up and ready to rock, right? Right into your browser. So you just tell us what you want to play, and we do the rest. And that includes picking the right model for the use case you have in mind, optimizing the performance and the quality mix, but also even introducing new technologies as uh, we discover new ways of doing things, right? So you don't have to worry about catching up to the latest model. We are going to take care of that. OK. So we've talked about the challenge and our approach to solve them. But now comes the crucial question, back to my introduction. What do you, developers, want to solve, right? And we also came up with a right plan for this, too. So let me explain. So first, we built what we call a discovery loop with an experimental prompt API for Gemini Nano. Why a prompt API? Because that's the best way for developers to explore the potential, right? You can talk to the model, get the response, explore the use case, and tell us what could be like potentially working. Maybe the quality is not great enough, but maybe we can make it better. All right? And we just, like, we didn't keep this party just in Tokyo. We had partners from eight different countries joining us. And we had like one week long hackathon with 50 incredible prototypes. So this thing is working, right? Like this like discovery is really doing its thing. So much so that uh, we learned a lot, right? Those things on the map that you see are the, site, the set of use cases that our partners wanted to use the AI for, right? So you can see summarizing articles, detecting like personal information, a bunch of like writing, rewriting scenarios as well. So um, this was awesome. And because of that, we, we felt there's something there, right? There's a lot of interest. Let's make things happen. And so with Google I.O. 2024, like just waiting in the corner, we had to rush and build a core tech for built-in AIs. And we did it. We had six equal use cases, two partners demos, and we were able to announce the developer preview for built-in AI. Um, Yudiko later will talk about one of those demos, so you don't want to miss that talk. You are going to learn about the behind the scene like stuff. All right. Our developer preview went live in May, and that slide says 7,000 members. We actually crossed 8,000 members, so this is going really well. And those developers are really eager to help us understand what AI should be in terms of like solving important problems. And so all of that feedback is great. It helps us better understand what is needed which, which sort of like API we should build. And so we use that feedback to refine our roadmap, right? There was a lot of dots on that map, but we need to prioritize a few things. And so as you can see, the bigger the dots, the bigger the demand. And those are the APIs that we decided to prioritize. All right, this is what we did, right? We made some decision about prioritizing things for now. There are a bunch of like other things, other APIs and backlog that we might get to, 
eventually, but those are the ones that we are currently focusing on. And to support some of the use cases we heard about, we also uh, decided to go with one more API to support the translator API, like a language detector API. And because we saw the power of having this like discovery loop, we also decided to keep the prompt API for all the folks that want to like explore more use case. All right, so map quest is over. <laughs> it's time to jack into some actual code. And I would just give you a sneak peek, and maybe the text might be small, so apologies for that. I'm going to share the slide after the talk. Um, and so if you want a deeper look, one of those APIs will be covered by Thomas right after my talk. Okay, so let's dive in. First up, the prompt API. So as I said, this is an API that lets you talk to Gemini Nano, right? You can send your prompt, you get a response, you can experiment. This has been available since Chrome 127, and we are launching an origin trial in Chrome 131, starting with Chrome extension. So pretty soon, you will be able to, you will be able to use this API for real with actual users in Chrome extensions. All right. Next up, the summarizer API. So as the name implies, this is great for condensing long text into bite-sized summaries. This is perfect for TLDRs, bullet points, headlines, you name it. This has been ready uh, for prototyping uh, since Chrome 129. And here again, we want to do an origin trial in 131. So the team back in Tokyo is still working on it. Hopefully, it, it's going to make it. But that's the plan. So, and here, it's kind of like help us uh, with the Google mission, which is help us make the information universally accessible and useful. So, looking forward to use case of this API. Uh, one more, a multilingual mystery solved, right? This is the language detector API. So you can use that to identify any like language in, in a text. This is great for doing translation, but also maybe triaging text to moderation queues for people who can talk like different languages, for instance. So it's a very simple API, but there is potential uh, for different use cases. This um, is actually live right now. You can go to your origin trial dashboard, sign up for an origin trial token, and uh, deploy that API for real with actual users. Um, okay. All right. So companion opinion to that, the translator API. So as the name implies, you can use that to translate between different like languages. Um, this is available in Chrome 131 for local prototyping. We hope that we can bring that in Chrome 132, and there is a slight chance that actually we do an origin trial in 131. It's uh, right on the scopes. So maybe it will happen, maybe it could be once, uh, 132. So uh, look forward to this one. All right, last one. This, this one is the rewriter, uh, writer rewriter API. So those are meant to help your users uh, maybe blast through writer's block, improve their writing, uh, rephrase, and all of that. Those ones are in the local prototype, prototyping phase. Uh, we don't know yet when we are going to do an origin trial, so it's kind of like on the backlog. But we do want to hear from you whether or not those APIs are shaped the right way, are they useful, and whatnot. All right, so we've covered a lot of ground today, but as you can tell, there is still a lot of things we could do on roadmap. Um, and so I want to give a, a, a quick speak at what is going to happen next. So what we want to do is we want to get those APIs production ready. And what that means is that we are going to put more effort into the quality of it, but also safety aspect. We also want to make sure that they are easy to use um, and smooth, right? So if you have feedback on the API shape, now is the best time to do so. Um, and in addition to that, we still want to hear about more use cases that we should look into. So if you have some ideas, please reach out. But there is one more thing um, that I'm super excited about, which is the Chrome built-in AI challenge. So if you have some ideas about how to use those APIs, there is going to be a prize for you. So if, please sign up, submit your project. Uh, we are also looking for feedback about the API and the quality of it, and there will be rewards for that. So look, uh, there, is, there is going to be a link at the end. All right. All right, almost done, right? So the future of the web, as you can tell by the slide, I believe it's neon bright, right? It's going to be pretty awesome. But it's also waiting to be coded because with built-in AI, the web is really what you make out of it, okay? So join the preview, sign up for the origin trial, solve user problems, rock the challenge, and let's pump it up. Thank you.